We are catching up with Nathan Weller here in the Indicade corner of E3. Busy, a lot of different games here, a lot of weird, wonderful things that Absolutely. are going on. That's, uh, it's one of my favorite spots in, in E3 in general. It's, uh, we've been a part of Indicade and been going to Indicade forever, for four or five years. And so it's always great to be a part of this. And there's some crazy ass games around here, that's for sure. I love it. And one of those crazy ass games <laughs> is Below. It's, uh, it's definitely a crazy ass game, that's for sure. It's it's certainly up. what I love about your games is the fact that you so you're not afraid to do sort of hardcore but still sort of beautiful visual games. Uh, this one certainly sort of I don't know what, I don't really know how to, to to phrase what it is, but it's sort of like a roguelike kind mm -hmm. of kind of feel to it. Yeah, it's a it's a game about exploration inspired by roguelikes. Mm -hmm. um, it's a game about survival um, and it's a game about discovering the game through playing it. Uh, we don't put any text on the screen, we don't put any tutorials, we don't tell you what the controls are, we just kind of trust the player to explore. Um, and you play a wanderer who arrives at an island um, and ends up finding his way into the depths. And uh, each screen in the depth is a level. Uh, it's just kind of the boundaries of your TV screen is a level. Um, and those levels are randomly generated. So every time you come, they're going to be slightly different um, and slightly new. And the exits might be in different places. Um, and our hope is that players will explore, will figure out and kind of play with the sword and shield combat will find some new weapons, will survive long enough to maybe discover some of the like lore and backstory to the game. I, I kind of like that because when I started playing video games, I couldn't even read. So you had to explore like that. You didn't have any explanations. You had to try the bottom, see what things, what mm -hmm. happens. So that sort of takes me back to when I start, first started playing video games. Is that sort of the feeling you're going for? Yeah, I think, I mean, we're definitely inspired by games of yore, but at the same time, we really wanted to bring it and, and make it feel like a game for now. Mm -hmm. um, and for us, I think we've really, we really believe that uh, the people who play games uh, want to feel that sense of discovery, want to find out for themselves what games are about sometimes. I mean, we all love getting a good game with a good tutorial that has lots of fun cutscenes. I love that myself and, uh, and you know, players obviously do too. But I think at the same time there's a group of players like myself who I, I love challenge and I love the, the sense of reward that I get from learning and figuring it out and exploring it and, and becoming better at it because I've, I took the time, because I uh, had a purpose and that purpose was to figure out how to be the best at a sword and shield or I picked up a bow and arrow and now I'm figuring out how to use a bow and arrow and when I get a couple of uh, when I kill a couple of enemies with that bow and arrow, I'm going to feel a lot better than if somebody says like press A to, and then you get locked in a, an unavoidable cutscene. So that, I mean, I'm not knocking that; it's totally fun for its own thing. But for us, uh, we really believe that there is a group of players who are, you know, very much like us that uh, are really smart and really enjoy, you know, using that intelligence. Another thing that struck me is like at first glance it looks a little bit old school, but when you go in and look at the details and the work that's gone into that, that's really next level stuff there. For us, uh, like the aesthetics and the music, who, the music's being done by Jim Guthrie, who also did the soundtrack for Sword and Sorcery with us. Um, the aesthetics of the game and the sound of the game and the audio design, for us, those are almost as important as the gameplay itself. It's, it's tone, it's atmosphere. It's uh, being able to convey to the player this sense of like, uh, mystery and, and, and wonder and maybe a bit of awe at the same time. And that also plays into why the scale of the game is so different, why the camera is so far back, why your character is so small. Because you're weak, you're one hit away from potential death, um, but you are nimble at the same time. And so we really wanted to try to play with a, a different scale and have the vision and the aesthetics kind of fit with the game and then have the game also fit with the aesthetics and the vision. And this is something that you're doing all by yourself, self-publishing. Can you tell us a little bit about the benefits of doing that as opposed to teaming up with someone who's paying the bill? Uh, for, it gives us the space to make the game exactly how we want. It lets us do it on PC and on console. It, uh, it gives us an opportunity to uh, constantly feel like we're in control of our destiny, of our quality, of our promotion of how and who discusses the game. Um, I'm a big fan of both Sony and Microsoft, of Steam, of 
basically all the platforms do a really great job of supporting us and letting us uh, do it our own way, yeah. of not kind of forcing us to shoehorn into some style of development or some mode of discussing a game or some way of playing. For us, like, we don't want to have a tutorial. We don't want to, I mean, if it's up to us, we don't even want to have a title screen. Um, and self-publishing kind of lets us you know, take control of that and, and really own it. And I think it's, for a studio like ours, we have we feel really strongly about doing things our way. That's why we started the studio, was to do things our own way. Uh, and, and the fact that in this generation, through Steam, through Xbox One and ID at Xbox, through the third party group at, at, at Sony and PS4, Nintendo, Apple, like every one of them has a system in the place to support what we want to do. And that's, I mean, that wasn't the case five years ago. And so we've been through that and, and we're very appreciative of it. And, and it gives us a chance to, to make weird, different stuff for an audience uh, that I think will appreciate it. Yeah. But as opposed to many other indies who are going so the self-publishing route, you're not doing it crowdfunding, you're not sort of looking to a community to design the game, you're looking you're looking inside of yourselves yes. to, to, to develop this game. Can you tell us a little bit about that decision and why you, why you feel more comfortable that? Um, I think any time that you don't have to ever ask for money, the better. Uh, I think that money causes a lot of pressure, uh, even when it comes from crowdfunding, even when it comes from publishers, even when it comes from any venue. Money does add a bit of different pressure, and so being able to make games our own way without that pressure is, is, is great. Um, I, I think that all of those opportunities, though, are very tangible and real and positive. I think any way that you can have the time to make your project uh, and you feel like it fits the way that you want to do it, whether it's crowdfunding or whether it's early access, I think all of those things really provide an amazing opportunity for developers to, uh, again, still keep that control. Um, and yeah, it, do, it does, like I said before, add some pressure, but in the case of, uh, of Kickstarter or in the case of early access, I think that pressure might be, might be good too. I think it also does like, add a lot of positives and it does help out a ton. So I think the opportunities that are out there for independent development or for small scale studio development, uh, we've never really had this much opportunity before. It's scary because uh, it's, there's a lot of games coming out, the quality bar is super high, getting your game discovered is really challenging, but at the same time, you, we gotta be pretty thankful that, and pretty happy that like, all of this is out there at E3, and I don't know, it's a, it's a really fun time for us. Uh, we're super stressed because you got to make some games and that's really hard, but at the same time, it's, it's pretty awesome to see independent developers on stage at all of the press conferences, to see even studios like Ubisoft making games like Valiant Hearts and Child of Light. Those are small games. Those are kind of inspired by independent games coming out of bigger studios, and I think we're going to see a lot more of that. All right, so I, I think my sort of my wrap-up question is usually when the game's out, but I think I don't even know if you're... you're Feels like feels yeah, like the wrong question to ask you guys because it, it's when it's done, right? Yeah, it's uh, it'll be this year or next year. Uh, we're I mean that's very wide, obviously, but uh, we're gonna put it out when we're when we're ready for it and when I mean. One of the most important things for us is to be able to speak honestly about our games. And I think the best way that you can do that with fans is to be proud of it, to be ready to let it go. And so uh, we'll try to make it sooner than later. It'd be great for us, it'd be great for players, but uh, not too sure. But it is definitely, it's coming to PC via Steam, it's coming to Xbox One, uh, and we're super excited to be able to get it out on both PC and console. All right, thank you so much for your time. Thanks a lot, man, a lot of fun.